One budget category that usually gets us all in one way or another is the grocery category. With a rising cost of food, the urge to ditch the ingredients in the fridge and order takeout, and a premium for healthy organic food, it's no wonder most of us can't seem to keep our grocery spending in check. Thankfully, grocery budget coach Rachel Coons is here with us to help make sure we stick to those budgets. In this episode, Rachel is going to share how she feeds her family of six for $700 a month in California, where to save the most money when grocery shopping, and how to stick to the grocery budget. Now, back in 2020, Rachel found herself at home with her four children and a husband that was out of work. After looking at their budget, she realized how easy it could be to cut her grocery spending. And she implemented some new techniques and slowly saw her spending go from $1,200 a month to $700 a month for her family of six. Rachel came up with the shop method to help her community cut their grocery bills in half. And now Rachel helps others spend less on groceries, get creative with tasty dishes, and avoid the stress that comes with not knowing what to buy or make. Hi, Rachel. Thank you so much for being here. Can we start by you sharing just a little about yourself and how you managed to master your family's grocery spending, which by the way, kudos to you. That is amazing. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Well, first off, thanks so much for having me. I'm super happy to be here. Um, Like you said, I am a mom of, well, I don't know if you said I'm a mom of four. So I'm a busy mom of four feeding my family. Um, That's always been a big passion of mine. Um, We've always been really frugal with our money. Um, But again, starting in 2020, we just kind of realized that we wanted to save money. Now, I also have a background in health and wellness. So that was really important to me as well to keep nutritious foods on the budget as well. Um, I teach fitness classes on the side. And so I kind of just like meshed those two worlds together where I'm like, okay, we really want to eat healthy, but we also want to save money. Let's see what I can do. And I just slowly started implementing new tips and tricks that I would try. Some worked, some didn't. And, um, I just was sharing that with my, my Instagram community as I was doing it. And it really kind of caught fire and people were like, holy cow, teach us what you're doing. I shared my journey. I shared what I was doing and other people started saving a ton of money as well. So that just like kind of lit my fire, lit their fire. And here we are today. Uh, I help, I've helped thousands of families cut their spending in half and um, realized at the end of last year that I just needed a method. I needed a step-by-step process that could get people these results without just having to like scroll through and watch, you know, thousands of reels that I've created. Uh, so that's where I um, birthed the shop method. And that's my my four-step system to just really get these results fast. And without taking, you know, the six months to a year it took me to cut my spending, I can do it pretty fast. Wow. I mean, I'm not surprised it caught fire. Um, you know, in the City Girl Savings community, I see it, you know, with my clients as well. Grocery and food spending in general is just it's hard to rein in. And, you know, with inflation being a thing, it's even harder now. So the fact that you have put it into a system that can work for so many people is amazing. Would you mind walking us through your shop method or like high level filling us in on some, some key things there? Absolutely. So the shop method, it's the four step process. And it starts with like, before you ever even go to the grocery store, um, we call it S stands for shop the shelf. So that's the idea that you're shopping what you have at home first, before you're even shopping the grocery store. And there's a lot to it. You know, it comes with essentials lists and recipes that we're looking at. Uh, so that's the first step. And then the second step is have a plan. So we need to make sure that we are planning what meals we're going to eat. We plan what we're going to purchase from the store. Uh, that's that whole meal planning, you know, that, that gets heavy in and of itself. When we talk about meal planning, there's lots of barriers there, but we try and break through that with my H step. And then O stands for order. So it's how are we getting our groceries from the grocery store to our house in the cheapest, most effective, most convenient way possible. 
And then also under that umbrella of ordering is two week grocery shopping. So spacing out our trips as much as possible. Uh, I shop for two weeks at a time and teach my students to do the same. And then that last step is preparing your food. How do we actually get our food onto the table? making sure that our kids actually eat our dinner because a lot of times we have, you know, we're cooking these dinners and our kids and family aren't even eating it. So how do we make sure that our family's eating nutritious, healthy foods? How do we build a meal to build it as healthy as possible? And um, so that's, that's it. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. It's the implementation that we really, that I really focus on and helping my students. How does this work for you? Because a lot of times we can see these things and they look great and they look like, oh, this is going to help me. But then how does it, how do I tailor that to what my family actually needs, what my necessary dietary restrictions or whatever involved in that? So that's the implementation. Yeah. I mean, I know some of the questions I have for you today, like we're going to touch on each of those steps in the process. So I'm excited to really dive in. But as I mentioned, like the grocery spending category is typically a troublesome area for most people. Um, why do you think that is like, what do you think causes people to overspend when they're going grocery shopping? I think the first issue is, is it's a, it's a category that we have to, we have to buy food and we, we have to buy food that our family is going to eat. So a lot of the times people are just spending without even thinking about it. It just is what it is. I have to, I have to go to the grocery store, not even knowing that it's an option to spend less. You don't even know that that's a possibility. I have a lot of people who will follow me and be like, holy cow, I didn't realize spending $1,500 a month is not necessary. You know, Mm -hmm. it's normal. The average person is probably doing it, but there's ways to save. So just being cognitive of the fact that you could spend less is the first thing. Obviously inflation is a big thing, right? grocery prices are more expensive than they used to be. I don't even like to focus on that though, because I just don't think there's nothing we can do about it. Right. We can't, we can't lower grocery prices. That's, that's something that I can't change. So I'm not going to waste emotional energy on it. I can acknowledge it as a thing and, and we can adjust if we need to. Um, so, but that, yeah, definitely that that's, that's painful for a lot of people when, you know, eggs go from, $8 $8 to $30 that will affect your budget, you know? So those are some of the things that I think really are affecting it. Yeah, I, I would agree. And I love your perspective of inflation is what it is. I think combine that with the fact that we all have to go to the grocery store, like, okay, we can accept like things are out of our control. How mm-hmm. do we move forward the best way possible? And it sounds like that's what you're helping people realize. Yes, yes, Absolutely. So what are some of the ways you help your community and even just yourself, like set and stick to a realistic grocery budget? And I know that budgeting is specific to the individual. We all have different situations, but are there some tips and tricks that you can share that will help listeners improve in this area? So I do. I mean, I think it is important to have a goal number. What is your goal number? And again, we can adjust it and it's not black and white and it doesn't have to be all or nothing thinking, but I like to start with the goal of just $5 per person per day. So for a family of six, that would be a $900 budget per month. You can calculate it out based off of your family. You times that number five times the number of people in your family times it by the number of days in the month. And then you have your budget. Now it's always like an experiment of, is that working for me? Is it not working for me? Do I need to adjust it? based on dietary restrictions. Like if you want to eat organic or if you want to eat grass fed, or if you're gluten-free or any of those things, then we can, we can add some, some money here and there that we need to, but just having a starting spot is a good place to start as well as tracking. You know, a lot of people aren't even tracking their spending. And so chances are, if you're not tracking, you're overspending. So once we become cognitive, like A lot of people will come to me and be like, I think I'm spending $1,200 a month. And then they'll come back to me at the end of the month and be like, well, we actually spent $1,800. So just even acknowledging what you're spending, that will actually save you money just by tracking what you're, what you're spending at the grocery store. Uh, I totally agree. I mean, part of my, so I'm sure you know this, I'm a budget coach. And so, you know, I'm not specific to the grocery category. It's just the budget in general, but a key part of my program is making sure you're tracking your spending. Cause to your point, 
if you are not tracking, you don't really know what you're spending. And if you don't know what you're spending, you can't reduce your spending. Mm -hmm. I think that's huge. Um, how do you feel about, or what do you think about people who live in maybe bigger cities compared to smaller cities? Do you think they should factor that in when setting a number for their grocery spending? You know, it's hard because I've had people in my program who have lived in San Francisco, who are, it's one of the most expensive cities in the United States, and they've been able to do it. They've been able to stay on that $5 per person per day. Now that's not to say that everybody should do that, but I, it, it is possible if you are really working hard at it, but yeah, if you live in inner city and, and it's, it's groceries are really expensive, you can't, you know, you couldn't order your groceries or you couldn't do certain things bump it up to $6 per person per day, bump it up to $7 per person per day. One of the things I really try to hit home with my followers and the people in my community is like, this is not an emotional thing. Budgeting and money can be so emotional for people. And we think that if, if we are spending more money, we're bad. We, we like feel bad about it. Don't feel bad about it. It's okay. It just is what it is. And just acknowledge what's happening. And again, everything's an experiment, figure out what's working for you. And, um, there's no guilt, there's no shame. It just, that's the number, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and here's the thing, like until you actually put the stake in the ground and say, okay, I'm going to give this a try. Like you don't really know what's going to work or not work. Right. So it's like, you're beating yourself up with, without giving yourself the chance to do what you're supposed to do. Right. And, and I think a lot of the times people are so afraid of failure. We're afraid to fail, but I always tell my students, there's no failure in this. You cannot fail. All you can do is try. And if you try and you don't hit that goal number, it's not failure. It's just another month that you just learned more things. You learned more and you move forward. Yes. Oh, I love that. I absolutely love that. So I recently read that Americans waste about 60 million tons of food every year. Is this in line with like what you see and what do you think drives the food waste of American households? I, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that play into this, but of most of the time, I'm not going to make it an absolute, but most of the time when people are spending a lot of money on food, it's not because they're using up the food that they have. It's because that they're, they're, they're wasting a lot of food. So when people are aghast that I spend so little on my family, but I don't throw anything away. Like we use up everything we have on hand. So if you are throwing food away, and I absolutely think that number is spot on, there's so much food waste. So if you can just utilize what you have on hand better and really focus on, you know, using up your perishables, you'll have less food waste and you will save money just by doing that. Yeah. And I think that's probably why it's the first step in your method, right? Like you what go. do you have on the shelf? Like yes, what, what can right. we make work with what you already have? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. So I'm going to kind of call myself out here. Um, me personally, I only plan to cook one specific meal during the week. So I buy ingredients only for that meal. I will admit my grocery budget is pretty low because of this process that I have. Um, in the past, I have gone overboard with my intentions and it's wasted me food. So mm -hmm. is there like a, a ratio or a sweet spot people can follow when it comes to meal prepping, especially for someone like me who, if I plan to cook two different meals in the week, I usually don't get to meal number two and my leftovers on day three are like, terrible. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. curious what you think. Yeah. So I actually am, I tell people not to meal plan more than four, maybe five meals a week. Uh, and again, everybody's different. You found your sweet spot for what works for you. But I do think that people who are planning more than five meals a week, you're just wasting, you're, you're just overbuying and things happen throughout the week. You know, you, you have a leftover night or you get invited to your friend's house for dinner or whatever. You just don't need a full seven meals a week. Um, so I do think that's like where, where I start with my students is start with four and adjust accordingly. You know, if you cook at home, if you know, you're going to cook at home, you live out in the country, you're eating every night at home. You can maybe plan for a little bit more, or you're like you, you're like, no, one meal is enough, but we have, you need to find what that is for you and, and, and stick to that. 
Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, like I said, I, I would plan a little bit more than that. And I would, I would be part of the 60 million tons of food waste. So <laughs> I, I, I work to combat that. Good for um, you. Good for you. you. <laughs> so, so you mentioned something pretty interesting and I feel like it's, it's not something I think about when I plan my food for the week, but leftovers. So you say, you know, plan four meals. Does that mean the other three meals are leftovers in your opinion? Or what are your thoughts on that? I, this is, I'm calling myself out here. I actually hate leftovers. Like I do not enjoy leftovers. (laughs) It's like the meal that I dread. (laughs) It's just not, it just, it's not as satisfying to me. So what we do that works for my family is we do one night of leftovers. One night where we just kind of use up. I'm pretty good now that I know what my family eats so I can cook about the sign, the portions. And I actually like cooking. So it doesn't, it doesn't bug me to cook. Um, But so yeah, we do one night of leftovers. One night is actually, I deem it my shop the shelf night, which I love having this extra night where I just use up, I open the fridge, whatever is about to go bad. And that's usually vegetables or produce of some sort. That is what we cook that night. So it's a shop the shelf, just use up what we have on hand. And then that third night is, is date night. So my husband and I go out and the kids eat mac and cheese or chicken nuggets or whatever, or it's just a yo-yo night. The kids are on their own, do your thing. Um, and that's, yeah, that's what works for us. Now, some people, I know some people will plan for only three meals a week and then they'll do leftovers like every other night. If you know, if their family will eat the leftovers, but I do think a lot of times people plan for these leftover nights and that they don't eat leftovers and it ends up getting thrown out. So really make sure you are a leftover person or you're not a leftover person. But I think that comes with kind of to your point, like knowing what your family or what, you know, the person is, is capable of eating. Right. Because if I make spaghetti and I know that I only want to eat it twice, right. I wouldn't make double the portions and have leftovers for four nights. So exactly trial and error, it sounds like is huge here. Yes. Yes. And I love that you guys have like a date night and the kids are kind of on their own. It reminds me when I was little Friday nights were always like pizza nights. So (laughs) my mom would always order us pizza and every Friday, like we knew we were getting pizza. I love that. Well, and it's so important for me mentally. Like I know a lot of moms deal with burnout and overwhelm. Take a night off, take two nights off, take three nights off, do whatever you need, because this is like a long Paul, this is a marathon. This is not a sprint. We're not just trying to put a bandaid on this. We're trying to figure this out for forever. So do what you need to do in order to continue finding passion, finding enjoyment through feeding your family. And if that means taking a night off as often as you need, do it. There's nothing wrong with your kids eating pancakes one night of the week, you know, just do what you need to do. Absolutely. I could not agree with you more. Um, so I've heard that taking a list to the grocery store can help you stick to your budget, right? Do you recommend shopping lists? And if so, any tips you can share for setting one up? Yes, absolutely. So, I mean, I might be letting out some things before we get to the next question, but I am a huge fan of ordering groceries online. So I don't even... I don't even step into the store if I can help it. Um, if I do go to the store, it is a hundred percent with a list at any time. And any, anybody listening, you can probably attest to this. You walk into the grocery store. How many times do you walk out with things that you weren't planning on buying? Almost every single time we'll see something on sale. We'll remember that, you know, we want to buy that new thing that just came out a hundred percent we struggle when we go into the grocery store. We're like little kitties, like, you know, just, it's all so fun. And um, shopping with a list will really help that. What's even better is not even going into the store and ordering online. Oh, I am so here for that. I've never, I've never done that. And I mean, like I said, I'm pretty good with my grocery spending and grocery budget, but I hate going to the grocery store. So like just yes. to avoid the grocery store, I should, this is, I should this is going to change your life. It's going <laughs> to change your life. We're going to get you ordering your groceries and you're going to be so happy. <laughs> oh, I, I totally agree with that. Um, now, is there a specific grocery chain that you prefer when ordering groceries online or is it pretty much all across the board? They're all good to go. 
So certain grocery stores will allow pickup for free that you can just order online and um, get your groceries, like pull up to the grocery store and pick them up. In my town, the best stores that I've dealt with have been Sam's Club and Walmart, but a lot of stores nationwide. Like I know um, Aldi does it. Kroger will do it. You know, there's a lot of different stores that you can have this option. And a step further, some of the stores, if you use their delivery service, you pay like a chunk per year. So like my Walmart delivery is a hundred bucks a year and I get deliver groceries delivered to my door. To me, this is worth the time savings. It's worth the convenience. Um, but if you're just starting out, yeah, just try ordering online and picking up. It's free. They don't upcharge. You do have to be careful with Instacart. Instacart is a delivery service and they do charge extra for every single item. So I tell students like, be careful with Instacart. If you're doing just one or two you know, items, it's okay. But if you're doing a big grocery haul, I would stay away from the stores that use Instacart. Okay. That's good to know. And have you ever had an issue with um, the store adding like expired or close to expired items in your order. I feel like that's yeah. something I would worry about. You know what? I, I've been so pleased with the customer service and the whole experience. Sam's club is a little bit better than Walmart. Now I will say with Walmart though, if I get a produce item that I'm not happy with, you just go into the app and say you weren't happy with it and they refund you no questions asked. Wow. So like one time I ordered a cauliflower, a head of cauliflower for like, you know, three bucks or whatever. And it, it was literally the size of my fist. And I was like, this is not okay. This is, I would never spend, like, I want a full head of cauliflower. So I went into the app and I told them, I was like, Hey, I'm not, I, I'm not happy with this. And they refunded me. So wow. they're, they're really, really good about making sure that you're happy with what you get. Okay. And I mean, that sounds like the best way to stick to your list, right? Because when you're ordering oh, yeah. online, like you're looking for very specific things and that's kind of it. <laughs> yeah. And you have to be intentional about everything you add to your cart. It's not, it's not thoughtless. It's all intentional. And you can see as you're adding, adding items, how much your total is the whole time. Yeah. So every time you, you can make sure you're staying under budget before you ever even go into the checkout, you know, whether you're under budget or not. I think that's a fantastic tip. Um, and I'm sure there are people out there who, unlike me, actually enjoy going to the grocery store. So let's say someone doesn't want to give that up. Do you have any tips for people to save money when they're actually at the grocery store besides sticking to the list? Yes. So first off, if you, I'm one of those people that loves to go to the grocery store too. Just try ordering online. Just trust me. Just try it. See, see how it goes. I mean, would you rather have, would you rather go shop at the grocery store or would you rather save $500? Like, you know, we're giving and taking here. And I always tell people the grocery store is not your happy place. If that's the place you're going to find happiness, let's find something else. Yeah. You know, like there, let's fill that void with something else. Go to, go to a movie, go on a walk, whatever. Okay. So that's my first, that's my first caveat, <laughs> but second, okay. The people that are like, yes, I'm still going to go to the grocery store. I'm not going to listen to Rachel. That's fine. Stick to the outer rim of the grocery store. You can go down the aisles if you have a specific thing that you need to get, but on the outer rim, we're going to spend less and we're going to eat healthier because you're getting ingredient based foods. So, um, that'll help you spend less, not be enticed by all of the yummy treats on the inner aisles. Uh, so that's my tip. Oh, I've never, I never thought about it like that, but you're right. Cause like the produce is on one end and then it's like the bakery on the other end and everything else is the processed stuff in the middle. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's packaged. The inside's packaged. The outside is fresh. Oh, very interesting. Okay. So I'm the one responsible for grocery shopping in my household. And like, like I mentioned, I hate it. Even when I was younger, going to the store with my mom, I hated it. I, I don't know why, but for people who do hate the grocery store, but, you know, understanding that sometimes we actually do have to go any tips to help them just embrace it. <laughs> Order online. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's, a, that's a great store. way to embrace it. You don't, need, you don't have to, in this day and age, there are so many other options. I would say, if you don't like the grocery store, good. You're on the right step. You're in the right path. <laughs> 
Um, I would say like the grocery store, why is it that you hate? Like go deeper than that. What is it about the grocery store that we don't like? Is it the overwhelm? Is it that we're spending money? Is it that it's making meaning we have to cook something? Like, what is it? Find those deeper issues and let's deal with that specifically. It's really just dependent on the person. Yeah. I mean, ding, ding, ding. You hit the nail on the head for me. It's the thought that I actually have to make <laughs> what I'm buying. <laughs> Yes. So, yes. So it's a, it's a, it's bad all across the board. But <laughs> anyways, so I actually don't have kids, but I can imagine how much more food spending can take place when kids are involved. Um, any extra tips for people with kids who always seem to overspend, especially on on food for the kids? And also, what do you think about kids coming along on grocery store runs? Okay. So first part of that question is a lot of the times we are overspending with kids because of snack food. Uh, moms want convenience. I, I get that. Um, but when we buy all of these prepackaged snacks, first off, we're not feeding our kids very healthily. And second, you're going to spend a ton of money. So moms who are blowing their budget, it usually comes down to the snacks that they're buying. So I really try and focus on ingredient based snacks whole food based snacks. That doesn't mean that the kids have to eat, you know, apples, every single snack, but there's ways that you can build your snacks so that you're not spending a bunch of money. Um, and then the second part of that question, having kids in the grocery store, the more distracted that we are, the less intentional we are with our grocery spending, the easier it is to overspend. And I mean, that's one of the reasons I also love ordering online. I sound like a broken record here, but that's one of the other reasons I just love ordering online is because again, I'm a mom of four and taking my kids to the grocery store is like hell for me. <laughs> it's horrible. You know, I do not enjoy it. So that really makes it easier. I don't ever have to take my kids in the grocery store and it helps me not get distracted. I'm not, I mean, I, I did take my, one of my sons to the grocery store a couple of weeks ago and like literally everything he wanted. It was like the, the fruity pebbles and the chocolate, you know, whatever it was. And it was so annoying, but he just wanted all of these things. Uh, so chances are, if you have your kids with you, it's gonna, you're gonna overspend. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's so interesting. You say that because I'm going to kind of take this a, a little off course, but like, I would assume, you know, when I'm a mom that if my kid is like, I really want this and they're giving yeah. me the puppy dog oh, yeah. eyes, oh, it's yeah. going to be hard to say no. Oh yeah. Oh, it is. It is. It's even <laughs> me who's a strict budgeter. I, uh, yeah, I get suckered all the time. <laughs> So, so don't take the kids to the store or order online. Like that's there it. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, so uh, another question that kind of relates to my situation. I don't really enjoy cooking. I don't know if it's the cleanup. I don't know if it's, I don't know what it is. And I have to go deeper there just based off this conversation. But for people who don't like to cook, obviously dining out has to be present in their budgets. What do you think is a, a sweet spot between your grocery budget, your dining out budget, specifically for people who don't like to cook? Yeah. And again, like there's nothing wrong with eating out. There's no, again, no, it's not good and bad. It just is what it is. And you're just going to have to experiment for what works for you. I always tell people there's like a good, better, best situation. You know, it's good to feed your family meals. It's or it's the best would be feeding them at home. It's like another step is to just feed them pre-made meals. You know, you're still going to save money and you're not eating out and it's easier for you. And then the next option is to, to is to eat out. That's going to be more expensive, but you're still feeding your family. It's okay. You just have to decide what works for you and what doesn't. I will say if you're eating out with your whole family multiple times a week, especially if you have kids, like you're going to spend a ton of money. So the step back from that is just to get more pre-made meals and take that, take that next step. Um, and again, I am all about aligning your priorities with your spending. So if a priority is just getting dinner on the table and you have five other million things that you're worried about, you're a working mom, or you have these things, there's nothing wrong with that. That's your priority, but just making sure that whatever your priorities are, that's where your money goes. Um, and so again, I don't think anything's wrong. There's nothing wrong with takeout. I get, we, we go out to eat at least once a week for date night. Um, and then we'll go get the kids, you know, food here and there. Yeah. 
I think you make such a good point. It's it's not a matter of like right or wrong. It's a matter of making sure that your budget and spending align to the things you want. So if you don't like to cook, okay, fine. You shouldn't have an extra high grocery budget bill, right? Like yes. most of that money should be exactly. reserved for takeout. So it's just doing the right things with your money based on what you want. Exactly, exactly. So do you have any easy go-to recipes that you do with your family or that you find are common in your community? Yes. Okay. So I'm a huge Instant Pot fan. I love the, my Instant Pot. And my probably my most viral recipe is my Instant Pot spaghetti and meatballs mm. because it is so stinking easy and it's delicious. So all you all it takes is meatballs, spaghetti noodles, spaghetti sauce, and some water. In your Instant Pot, you cook it for eight minutes and you literally have a full meal that you didn't do anything. My kids love it and my whole community loves that meal. Wow. And so everything goes in the Instant Pot together and eight minutes, boom, done. Everything in the Instant Pot. It's, it's magic. <laughs> wow. I have an Instant Pot, but I've never tried that recipe. I need to try it. Yes, it's really good. And then I'll cook up like some broccoli or whatever on the side, but it's delicious. You get everything you need. Now, I know you mentioned you love to cook. So if like you had the time and everything works out the way it's supposed to, do you have a specific meal or two that you just love to whip up? Oh, yes, I do. And I usually save those meals for Sunday, like when my husband's home and I have more time in the kitchen because I just don't have that much time. Um, I My family loves honey lime enchiladas. Ooh. That's one of our favorite meals. Um, so we'll do that. We do love like a good steak on the barbecue. Those are like our Sunday, our high, you know, nice Sunday meals, uh, that take a little bit more time. I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of rolls. I make some, I, I mean, I might be impartial, partial, but I love my homemade rolls. So those are something that we get. That's a special treat because it is labor intensive. Oh, I need to come to your house for dinner. You're always welcome. <laughs> yep. Take a trip. <laughs> that sounds amazing. <laughs> now, where do you get your recipes? I mean, if, if someone really does enjoy cooking, but they don't really know, like, you know, it takes time to learn that, you know, certain spices taste a certain way and change the dish. So how can someone uh, find recipes that are easy, uh, but also cost effective? <laughs> so I, I'm a perfect resource for that. I share a lot of recipes on my, my social medias. Like whenever I find a recipe that my kids love, that's nutritious, that's easy. I'll post it and share it with the community. Um, I also have meal plan guides that offer like a full month's worth of meals, grocery lists and everything that you need. So I, I actually use those as well. So I have three months worth of meal plan guides. So whenever I need a recipe, I just go there. Um, but then I also love, like I'll use I'll use Google to search whatever I have on hand, right? Like I love to try new things. So if I have something in my fridge, that's about to go bad. I'm going to Google a recipe for that item and I'll try something new. Nice. I, 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 I'm not the right person to ask though, because I love to try new things. I love to try new recipes. <laughs> uh, is it, is it just the excitement of whipping up something new or what, what do you, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I just, it's just, it's kind of like, you've always hated it. I've always loved it. So maybe we were just born this way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, so can you talk a little bit more about your community how you help people. If, if my listeners are interested in like, you know, working with you, can you walk through what that is like? Sure. So I'm on Instagram and TikTok and, um, my handle, you can maybe tag it below. It's Hey, Rachel Coons. Uh, so I post a lot of stuff on there. And then I also have a, a newsletter that goes out so you can get on my email list. We do, we just created a Facebook group. It's called the thrifty foodies. Mm. Uh, that's a place more, we can have more like content interactions, communication, and then um, I now have a eight week program called the Grocery Budget Boot Camp, and that's my eight weeks to implement the shop method and to learn how to spend five dollars per person per day. And I launched that a couple times a year. So we actually just finished up a round. Uh, it was super fun. And then another round will launch in the fall. So if you want to get on the wait list for that, we've got a wait list. Hundreds of people are on the wait list. Uh, so that next round will be in the fall. 
Wonderful. I will link to the wait list in the show notes. So anyone listening who wants to join the next round can do so. Yep. 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 We'd love to have you. Yay. Uh, Well, what is next for you, for your company? Do you see yourself continuing what you're doing, expanding on it? I'd love for listeners to hear. Yeah, this is something that I'm kind of like diving deep into right now is like, what's I've created this program. It's amazing. I love it. But like, what's next? What's my next thing that I want to do? And actually, recently, I've really been diving more into like money mindset. And what does that, you know, because I'm in the budgeting sphere and you are too, I think a lot of budgeting comes from a, a sense of scarcity with money. And I'm really trying to like rewire my community's minds that budgeting is all about abundance yeah. and like, how can we just be better stewards over the money that we have? And uh, again, align our, our spending with our priorities. So I don't know what that means. I think maybe that will be like a, a membership that we have, or maybe another core, something that helps us really tap into that money mindset and helping people have a better money mindset. Yeah. I think it's so important because especially with budgeting, right? I mean, I've talked about this a lot on the podcast and I'm sure you've seen it in your community. People hear the word budget and cringe, right? Mm -hmm. They're like a budget. I can't, that means I can't spend. And that's, that's not the case. You know, you alluded to it earlier. A budget is it's a tool. It's a thing, right? It's there's, we put the emotion into it. We put the emotion behind it and, and what we think it means. But when we can let go of those things, a budget can be such an impactful resource for reaching our goals. Uh, Amen. 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 (laughs) Couldn't have said it better myself. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Rachel, thank you so much for being here. I know you mentioned your TikTok and Instagram and then the Facebook group. So I will link to all of that in the show notes. Your advice was very helpful for me. And I have no doubt for the listeners of City Girl Savings. Any final words before we wrap? No, just thank you so much for having me on here. It was super fun and I love your podcast. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for being on here. And here's to saving on groceries. Woo! Woo!